What's good, YouTube? Back again with another video. And today's video is going to be a serious talk, serious topic, something that I never did before as far as on my YouTube channel. But I was a little inspired by a couple of guys on including Resurrection and his live from yesterday. It got to a point where they were talking about collecting and the bad that comes with it, you know, the issues that come with it. So this video is to talk about the bad and good when it comes to collecting. So I do have some footnotes here that I wanted to make sure that I hit. So that's why I have the iPad in front of me. You know, it's fun. And then there comes a point where, as you can see, when I first started collecting sneakers, I wanted to get every original Jordan colorway. That was important to me. One through 14, you know, of course I collect past 14, even up until 36. Original colorways was always the most important thing to have in my collection. And that turned into new retros. That turned into fucking collabs. So all of a sudden, you know, now instead of just keeping to the script, I ventured out and have all these different colorways. Same thing with the LeBron, same thing with the Kobe's. I've always wanted the sneakers that they actually wore on court. That was the most important thing to me. You ever seen the back of a retro card and you see like the, you know, one through 20? That inspired me to collect at one point, I just wanted one per silhouette. So if I had one, two, 23, let's just say, one of every sneaker, that was fine for me. You know, maybe a couple of the retro original colorways, but nothing crazier than that. And then now I've amassed such a huge collection, I have to rethink possibly of how I do things. I only have two feet and I only have two days out of the week that I can actually wear my stuff. If I could wear my stuff every day, maybe that's a different conversation because I'd be more into wearing my stuff every day. I only have about 100 days that I could wear my sneakers. If I wore every single sneaker that I had, it'll take probably four years for me to wear every single one. That sucks. I'm DSing sneakers from five years ago. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's one thing that I, I have to think about personally. So a couple of things that I wanted to mention. So there's good and bad, right? There's, of course, the collecting part that is good and makes you feel good. And we're going to talk about that part. But we're going to talk about the bad part first. So when you get into the jersey game, when you get into the sneaker game, have a game plan, in my opinion, right? If that means collecting only collabs or collecting just have something and stick to it because what ends up happening is you'll purchase something and once you cross that off the list now you want the the next hunt and that happens to all the collectors so it's not just the one iverson jersey it's i need all the iverson jerseys not just the one jordan jersey i need all the jordan jerseys at the end of the day they're pretty much the same so you know, and this is a conversation I have to have with myself. So this is something I would say, stick with the script, stay with a plan. If you want to collect Jordan sneakers, one through 14, do so. Maybe a couple of pairs, every silhouette, and that's it. Enjoy those, keep it moving. All right. So one of the mistakes that I make, and this is a part of the bad, is I definitely made some suspect purchases. All right. Uh, I have a fucking Baker Mayfield authentic. Now, I bought it for 60 bucks, but that doesn't mean that it was justifiable. So that's another thing I want to get into as well. There's a few football jerseys that I got, elites especially, and even the newer Nike stuff. But my new Nike basketball jerseys have pretty solid picks, so I don't mind that. It's my, some of my football stuff that I'm like, uh, or some of my vintage stuff, I'm like, uh, I probably didn't need to get it. I have a Dak Prescott jersey. I'm not a fan of Dak Prescott. I'm not a fan of the Cowboys. That jersey is going to be on sale. So with that being said, you know, there's certain purchases. You're kind of in the spur of the moment because you're looking constantly. I used to look at Fanatics a couple of times a day. That's crazy. Now I may look at Fanatics once a week, you know, if that. There was a sale this morning on Mitchell & S 30% off. I took a quick skim and I just wasn't interested. So the suspect purchasing is something that I know that I've done in the past 
And that's something that I wish that I was a little bit more focused back to rule one, sticking to the script, sticking to what I want, what I always wanted, staying with that, no need to veer off, right? A third thing that a lot of us collectors do, I'm the first one to do it. If there's a sale, they have to pick something up. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to. So 30% off, 40% off. It's still money leaving your account, regardless if it's a sale or not, regardless if you're getting a good deal or not. A 40% off $300 jersey is $190. You're still paying $190. It's still coming out your account for something that maybe you kind of didn't really want or you're just justifying it because it's a sale. All right, so you got to be careful with that. I've done it before. I've done it with sneakers. I've done it with clothing. I've done it with jerseys. I, hey, yo, there's a sale. I need to get these. Well, you know, get what you want. Get what you want, regardless of the price. If it's in sale, even better. Always want to go for the sale, but get what you want. Don't get something just because the sale is there. That's another thing that I would say. Just be mindful of. Those sale jerseys can quickly end up to thousands of dollars at the end of the year. So, you know, that's another thing. I'll give you an example, right? I probably spent three to 4K on newer Nike jerseys in the past year or so, right? Without really fucking putting a dollar amount to it. That three to 4,000 could have easily been saved. Could have easily been a Disney trip with my kids and my family. You know what I'm saying? So jerseys is cool. I could only wear one at a time. So all of this shit is nice. And don't get me wrong. I do love my jerseys. But I have to have some sort of sense that, yo, I could have saved that amount of money and done something with my family to, to create memories. Right? That's the important thing in, in life. They're going to remember, yo, dad, I remember when you took me to Disneyland and we saw Mickey Mouse and and that's going to mean a lot more to me than copping the latest curry. You know what I'm saying? Copping uh, a, a Devin Booker Suns jersey. So in retrospect, I've cut down my spending a lot, even though I still purchase here and there. I have to look at it from that point of view now, in a sense like, yo... That large chunk of money you spent within those six to eight months, that could have been saved and, and, and done something else with it, you know? So that's just one thing I wanted to say. Another thing is how much time we spend on searching for jerseys, purchasing jerseys, doing videos for jerseys. Think about that, right? So my time is very valuable. I got to be efficient with my time. There's priorities in my life. So obviously family is your first priority. You want to make sure you're taking care of your family, take care of your bills, etc. That's a no-brainer for anybody. But health is my priority after that. Work is my second. You know what I mean? Like all of these things are more priority to me than jerseys. But think about how much time you spend on Facebook. You know, some of us are in jersey groups and you're looking back and forth at people's purchases and what are people selling. You're spending time on eBay. You're spending time on Fanatics. You're spending time on Mitchell and S. You're thinking about the next one and the next one and the next one. You got a list, you know, that we all have had and you're crossing all your list out. I'm done with the list, man. I'm personally done. I have no list. If I see something, I like it. Cool. If I don't, no big deal. I pretty much have everything I could ask for. Just being honest. Yeah, all right, maybe I'd want an authentic Nike red jersey, Michael Jordan jersey, the orange jock tag. That'd be nice to get, and I probably could get it, no problem. But I'm done with lists. I'm done with search curies. I'm done with all of that because that just keeps feeding the, the next thing that I want to talk about, and that's feeding the addiction. Unfortunately, it's not the worst addiction to have. I'll say that. Although it can lead to a really slippery slope financially, absolutely, right? People who made conscious decisions on maybe purchasing a jersey that they could miss out or maybe skipping a meal, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe uh, paying a bill late, you know? So it absolutely can go down that route. 
but we all as collectors feed some sort of addiction after jerseys and sneakers i don't have an addiction other than that luckily you want to count working out an addiction i eat a lot of fucking bison meat maybe that <laughs> but other than that i don't have any hobbies you know i love to play basketball i love physical activity love to be with my kids chase them so i'm lucky enough in that sense a lot of the collectors that we have are into collectibles they're into toys they're into funko pops they're into a bunch of other things that keep them busy and keep their mind going you know makes them happy it's an addiction that we're all feeding so just be careful with that it's okay to realize that you're addicted to something it's fine it's a part of the process to move on you can't move on unless you can't admit that. So, yeah, I do have an addiction. I love buying shit, and I love cool shit. I love sneakers, <clears throat> pardon me. And I love sneakers, and I love sports. And it's all one relationship that I have that all intertwine, right? Sports, it started with sports, playing basketball, seeing Michael Jordan play as a young kid. It started with the sneakers, and then went to the jerseys. The same reason why I loved it, when I was eight, nine, ten years old, same reason that I love it now at 30 fucking eight. So there's that. So you have to just be mindful. Listen, it's definitely an addiction. It can be addictive. It is addictive. And if you're always thinking about the next one and not enjoying the ones you have, you know, you may have to check yourself. So I have to too. Trust me, we're in this together. All right. Now the good. So. My bad, y'all. So the good that I wanted to express is, of course, it feels great. It feels great to walk into this room. Now, this room's a little bit more um, filled than it usually is. But generally speaking, it felt nice coming down here, seeing my Jordans displayed, seeing my jerseys nice and neat, in order. It felt good. And it fuels that passion from when I was a young kid, you know, seeing Jordan play in Jordan 8s, seeing in junior high school, I remember seeing guys with Jordan 12s on, you know, fucking they looked out of this world, beautiful, like so nice. And then watching Mike on TNT with the same Jordans on, it absolutely feels good. The second thing that I want to say is these all hold some sort of monetary value, right? So... You may not get the same, you may get a little bit less, you may get a lot less, you may get a lot more. However you look at it, if you enjoyed it and you decide to let it go, at least you enjoyed it, all right? That's where I'm at with it. I enjoy all my shit. I enjoy it while I can, I wear them while I can, I love my shit. But at least if I had to let it go, it holds monetary value, it has some sort of resale value. Sometimes you may get a shitload of money, especially when it comes to sneakers. And now it seems like jerseys are part of that same thing. You may get a shitload of money if you let them go. So the good part is it's not a zero value thing. It's not like you paid for something and it completely has no value if you ever try to let it go. Matter of fact, before real quick, shout out to Matt, shout out to Snacks, shout out to Rez, shout out to Eli, shout out to Jake. Um, shout out to, to everybody else that was a part of that live, um, Big John. So shout out to them, but something like alcohol, right? You pay $60, you pay a hundred dollars for a bottle, you drink it. That's it. You're done, right? You put poison in your body. First off, I drink occasionally. Um, I'll have some wine here or there. If I'm really on a social setting, maybe I'll have a cocktail here and there. So, with that being said, I drink occasionally. To me, if you're drinking to get smacked, so obliterated, then, again, you may have to refocus some things. And that's a part of the addiction thing, and that's a whole different world. It's not like something like that, where I'm, I'm buying something, and there's no benefits of it financially. There's no benefits of it from health. So, I will say that that's a good thing when it comes to collecting sneakers and jerseys, right? And then the last thing, they're pretty cool. Pretty cool to display. I love displaying them. I love having them in these clear cases. I love my Kobe's, right? Kobe's are probably something I would never sell. 
I sold one Kobe and I regretted it because I sold it before he passed away. Although it was a sneaker I didn't really care about. It was like, eh. But now that he passed away, he's my second favorite player ever of all time. Second favorite athlete of all time. So I kind of regretted it after the fact. I, of course, didn't foresee what was going to happen or else I never would have sold it. You see the Kobe's here. I'm going to keep all of them, right? Most of my LeBrons probably keep. So that's the next step that I'm at. I'm going to be selling a lot of this stuff. I already made an eBay account. I already have things listed, but it's inactive because I'm going to go on vacation and enjoy a little bit of uh, family time. So once I come back, I'll put that out there. I'll list the stuff. I'm going to put some stuff. I'm going to put some apparel. I'm going to put some sneakers. I have a Jordan 7 Olympic down there. This is the alternate. I'm going to put that on there. I have a Jordan 10 Stealth. I'm thinking about putting up there. So I have a couple of sneakers that I definitely want to let go. I want to let go more jerseys. And you guys will see, like, the process is now beginning. You have to be comfortable with letting a lot of these things go. You know, and once you get to that point, you'll feel the freedom a little bit, right? You take the shackles off. You know, I got to collect more. I got to do this. I got to keep this. And you're like, no, I don't need to keep it. I can have one red Jordan jersey and be fine. Truthfully, right? I probably not selling my Jordan stuff now, but if I decided to, I'd be fine. If I have one red, one black, and one one white, right? I mean, I can only wear one jersey. <laughs> I, it's not like you're wearing them every day. If I was wearing them every day, all right, cool. I got a different jersey on with a different patch, cool. But I'm not wearing them every day. So, and guess what? I'm gonna be at my job for at least the next 15 years until I can retire. So this is going to be my life until I retire and I'm just going to accumulate more stuff and not be able to wear more stuff. Doesn't make sense, right? So I'm going to stick with the stuff that I wanted to stick with, get rid of the extra excess fat, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? There's nothing wrong with that. So that's my video to you guys. I know this one's a little bit deep, but I think it's a necessary video to have to talk about because it's the reality of collecting, unfortunately. So I need to stick to the script. Back to originals. Back to original Jordans only. Back to original LeBrons only. Fuck a sale. You know what I'm saying? So I got to stick to a script. Be disciplined like I am in other things in life. I'm disciplined in a lot of ways. I got to be disciplined with this jersey sneaker stuff. And this is hopefully the start. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be back again with another one. Be out. Peace.